We're not sure how you did it, but you got yourself a date. Not sure where to take her? How about Niagara Falls? One of the most romantic destinations in the world that's equal parts stunning and budget friendly. Watch those hands now. No, we don't mean on her. We mean on the boat. There are very specific safety regulations aboard the boat to prevent you from ending up overboard and a few short minutes away from a 56 foot drop. Now I know what you're thinking. Surely no one has survived such a fall? right? Before we answer that question, let's brush up on our geography. Where exactly are the Niagara Falls? Canadians everywhere may be disappointed to hear, but their natural claim to fame actually spans over bits of the United States as well as Canada. In fact, Niagara Falls is part of a three waterfall group that borders between New York State and the province of Ontario. The largest of the three is Horseshoe Falls, also known as the Canadian Falls, where the smaller American Falls and Bridal Veil Falls lie entirely within the United States. Impressively, the Canadian Falls measure 2,200 feet across with an average drop of 188 feet. While Niagara Falls aren't the largest waterfalls in the world, it is thought to be the world's fastest moving. About 28 million liters or 700,000 gallons of water travels down Niagara Falls every second. This power can therefore produce large amounts of electricity. Today, it produces about one-fourth of the electricity for the state of New York and the Canadian province of Ontario. That's enough to power over 3.8 million homes. On top of that, Niagara Falls is also said to provide 20% of the United States fresh drinking water. Its other claims to fame include the fact that the New York State Park holds one of the oldest flags still in existence. Captured in the War of 1812 by the British, the flag still stands on display at Old Fort Niagara. Then, of course, there's the fact that Niagara Falls is the honeymoon capital of the world. Yeah, you heard me right. Known for its romantic grandiosity, it's often cited as the world's eighth wonder. But I wouldn't advise that you tell your date that just yet. It might scare her off, being that this is your first date and all. But how do these falls come to be? According to geologists, this natural wonder formed around 16,000 years ago during the last ice age. As the glaciers in the area began to melt, this allowed for water from the newly formed Great Lakes to carve a path through the Niagara Escarpment to the Atlantic Ocean. Although this seems like a long time ago, scientists consider Niagara Falls an infant in comparison to other geological phenomena. Locations like the Great Causeway Columns in Ireland and KPG Boundary in the Netherlands are more than 60 million years old, while the Niagara Falls are a measly 16,000. The first reference of the falls is said to have come from an account by Samuel de Champlain, who met the indigenous Iroquois people in 1604. In fact, the word Niagara is derived from the Iroquoian word Onigara, which means a thundering noise. Not a far-fetched name if you ask me. You may want to get your eardrums checked after this boat ride. However, the first real documentation of the falls came in 1678 from the French explorer Louis Hennepin, who called the natural wonder a vast and prodigious cadence, whatever that means. People began to visit the attraction in the early 1880s, and by 1885, the Niagara Falls State Park in New York was established and put on the map. But the falls' greatest claim to fame arguably has nothing to do with its beauty. Rather, it's more well known for the people who have achieved, or at least tried to at least, great feats over its waters. Take the tightrope artist that crossed the entire three waterfalls in 2012. He received the go-ahead from both the Canadian and U.S. governments, but of course he had to carry his passport upon entry to the Canadian side of the falls. Or David Copperfield, who pulled the escape stunt of a lifetime strapped to a raft lit on fire. You'll want to brace yourself for this one. Copperfield would only have 60 seconds to escape from a yellow steel box that covered everything from his head to knees suspended over a raft that was, <laughs> yeah, you guessed it, lit on fire. With only a minute to escape until he was swept away into the rapid waterfalls, Copperfield was meant to escape from the steel box and ride upstream on a jet ski. That is until the raft tipped over the falls. But just when everyone thought that all hope was lost, Copperfield emerged hanging from a helicopter just a few feet above the rapids. And he loves to tell whoever will listen that his hair was dry the whole time. Uh, before you get any adrenaline-driven ideas, you should know it's completely illegal to descend the falls. And on the off chance you survive the fall from over 160 feet, you can expect a hefty $10,000 ticket. According to statistics of all the people who've willingly, sometimes even unwillingly, descended the falls, about 50% of them survive. Some people descend without any protection whatsoever, while others are reported to have been a little bit more, mm, should we say, creative. 
take Annie Edson Taylor, the first known and recorded person to have descended the falls and survived. Interestingly enough, her vessel of choice was a barrel. Her motives are reported to have been purely financial, however, she never made money from the adventure. And then there are the miraculous stories of people falling into the rapids without any protection and coming out alive. Take the young seven-year-old boy Roger Woodward, who in 1960 went over the Canadian Horseshoe Falls after his boat capsized. After being rushed to the hospital, he was released after three days with nothing but a slight concussion. But of course, the young boy wasn't fined a ticket worth thousands of dollars. But Kirk Jones, a man who descended the falls in 2003, can't say the same. Recognized as the first person to have luckily survived the drop without any protection or aid, the story goes that Jones decided that day to swim 100 yards until he reached the falls. He may have been among the lucky few who have walked away with his life, but it came with a $2,300 fine and a ban for life from entering Canada. And then there's the quirky story of a man and his best friend, a turtle. Yeah, you heard me right. In 1930, Sonny and his owner George fatefully descended the falls one day in, you guessed it, a barrel. Somehow, the 150-year-old turtle survived the drop, but George wasn't as lucky. So by now, we've set the record straight. You can survive a fall into Niagara Falls, but the odds aren't in your favor. Experts deduce that the feat only has a 25% success rate. But look at it this way. You now have tons of stories to share with your date. Not only will she be entertained, but we're certain she's going to be impressed by your brains too. Wait, what are you doing? I'm pretty sure that's not what you're meant to be doing. Look at the signs. No, this isn't worth it for a selfie. It's not gonna impress her that much. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, watch out! Okay, remain calm. That's not gonna work here. The current is far too strong. All right, listen up. We're gonna guide you through how to survive a fall over Niagara Falls or any big waterfall. Listen carefully, your life depends on it. First things first, and I know this is hard, but stay calm. There isn't very much time between now and the drop, so every second counts. As I said, unless you're Michael Phelps with superhuman capabilities, there's no way you're swimming upstream. Those rapids above the falls are known to be over 25 miles per hour and get even faster over the brink at almost 70 miles per hour. Just before you go over the edge, take a deep breath. Prepare yourself by falling feet first to avoid head injury. As you're falling, tighten your muscles and wrap your arms around your skull to protect it. Just before you enter the plunge pool, tightly press your legs together and shut your eyes and mouth to make yourself watertight. For reference, think of these Summer Olympics and how the professional divers tighten their bodies before going into the water. Now brace yourself. Now that you've surfaced, swim downstream to avoid the falling water. It'll be tough since there are lots of bubbles, turbulence, and darkness down there. Now it's essential that you get out of these waters as quickly as you can. After all, we wouldn't exactly describe Niagara as a tropical destination. We're talking about waters in the 30 degree Fahrenheit range. Experts estimate that you have about three to five minutes to get yourself out of the water before you black out from the cold. In fact, the mere shock of the cold could trigger a heart attack, even in healthy people. According to experts, what truly saves you during a big fall like this is the angle at which you enter the water and if you enter feet first. This is how most high divers do it. Take the world record for highest dive, 177 feet, which nearly matches Niagara's 180 foot height. And before you ask, no, we're not going to petition for this to get into the Guinness World Records. It also helps that you're in pretty good shape. According to the World High Diving Federation, an athlete must be at maximum strength in order to succeed at diving. Because you have to tighten your muscles, you need to be able to withstand a great hold despite things like fear and adrenaline, which can be achieved through training and great strength. If the body isn't at its maximum strength, you better believe that the results could be gruesome. In 1968, a study titled Fatal Injuries resulting from extreme water impact revealed the impact from big falls could crush rib cages, rupture heart and blood vessels, and cause major organ damage. Yikes. Well, I guess you're one of the lucky ones. Only three people who have slipped or jumped into the falls without any protection have lived to tell the tale. You may not have gotten that coveted selfie, but it looks like your date is pretty impressed. Maybe you can convince her to stay next to you for these next few weeks as you recover from your concussion. And while you do, you can share your breath of knowledge on how to survive a fall into Niagara Falls. Or if you'd like to switch it up a bit, then check out any of our other How to Survive videos. We promise it'll be far more impressive than any plain old selfie. Until next time, Brainiacs.